Gender, race, and climate, behold, the three horsemen of the liberal apocalypse, designed not to start a national conversation, but to stop a real one. They're meant to subvert the greatest country ever. With race, if you don't agree that we are a racist country, then you are a bigot, therefore you are evil. With gender, if you don't see the patriarchal victimization of all women, you are a sexist and likely evil. If you question faulty climate models, you are a denier, a smear that puts you on par with Holocaust denial. This crud persists due to an endless supply of enablers churning out tripe from their perches in the media, teachers' lounges, and sound stages. The good news? The evil arts of division are imploding into parody. As America mocks campus shriekers and race-baiting charlatans, the jokes on the left when all that's left is identity politics. So how do you kill off these horsemen once and for all? A call for unity might work. When race comes up, point out that a scab won't heal if you keep picking at it. And isn't it sexist to expect women to care only about gender? What about foreign policy, unemployment, immigration, or is that just man stuff? And yes, climate does change, but the climate pause should give us all pause. So hopefully years from now, we will look back at this time as if we were in a bad dream where sense of self and country were turned inside out to gin up strife. We used to be one country. We can be one again. Let's hope it's not Greece. That wasn't a jab at you, Andrea. Uh, I was going to say. No, that was about. No offense taken. Contemporary Greece, which is going through a living hell yes. uh, as, a, as a, a revolt against our austerity program. That's true. But I want to go to Julie. I want to talk to you about this, uh, uh, this division. I want to play a clip from Camille Paglia. She was uh, talking uh, to Reason about race, class, and gender. She's kind of a genius. This is what she had to say. Our problem now, okay, is that is this 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 monomania, you know, the, the, the identity politics so, of the 1970s. Yeah. So people see everything through the through the lens of race or gender or social class. Or class this is a yeah. madness, an absolute madness, and in fact, it's a distortion of the 60s. Uh, is it a madness? It seems like a madness. Yeah, I think you're actually right about this to some extent. Not the global warming stuff, but the uh, <laughs> but, but this stuff. Uh, look, I'm a little tired of the the whole identity politics. I agree with you on that. I, I think all of us who are women here would agree. That's one element of who we are, but you there are things. Better get used to a bunch more coming your but way. There are things, year, well, so. But there are things that uh, that I agree that I think it's gotten to the point where you can't just run for something because you're a woman or you're a man or you're a minority or you're got a red hair or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people are a lot more than the sum total of, of any one element. Yes, it, 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 you you are part of a country. Right. You're a political mind, Andrea. Do you yeah. think that the identity politics are, are are sincere ideology or it is done just to destroy? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, and I used to say that women weren't one issue voters until I was shocked this last presidential election where college educated women, suburban women, turned out in droves to vote for Barack Obama and they made the entire campaign based on the war on women and contraception. I mean, birth control. Right. These are women who did not need the government to subsidize their birth control, but they basically said, yeah. I need you to subsidize my sex lives. And that, to me, was one of the biggest surprises. Mm -hmm. I do think that young people probably less see things through the prism yeah. of race and gender. But your monologue was so good because it's the people who claim that we should be healing these rifts. They're the same ones that are attacking yeah. females like myself, like Katie. I'm sure you get it a lot, Julie, too, even for being on the left. But she gets it from me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you should see the tweets that he sends me. But just saying, drunk, like, he's sending me like tweets we shouldn't talk violence against women. You should respect women. And they send some yeah. of the most disgusting, yeah. despicable tweets. And it's the people that are calling for racial equality and gender yeah. equality. And then they just talk both, or I should say type, out of both sides of their, their body. Yeah. Katie, could you imagine uh, Hillary Clinton talking to a woman and saying, so let's talk about terror. Could <laughs> no. you ever see that happening? No. Because no, it would always be about, it has to be a gender. I'm a woman. I'm a woman. Let's talk about women-y things, yeah. like whatever. But then if you talk about women-y things like hair and whatever, yeah. then you're also a sexist. So you can't win. But to yeah. what you just said, Militant feminism, which is the feminism that she was talking about, which is ridiculous to see th everything through. Militant feminism is the Al Sharpton of gender. 
I mean, they have to continue to play up this false victimhood in order to keep their jobs. Because they, if they actually solve a problem and make make sure that women have the same opportunities as men, um, and if they, you know, embrace women to be empowered to pay for their own things and pay for their own bills and to succeed on their two feet, not by I don't know marrying and staying married to someone like Bill Clinton, despite all the horrible things he does to you to embarrass and humiliate you, they have to continue their narrative, or they're out of a job. So right. That's that's who they. They are. They're the Al Sharptons of the gender movement. Hypocrites. Don't, don't, Not stop, hypocrites. don't, don't fix the problem that, that's your product. Right, exactly. <laughs> but you know, don't, don't create the cure for your, for yeah. your, for right. your medicine. This is actually very timely because Monica Lewinsky did a TED Talk about bullying. You sort of think about what she went through 20, 30, mm -hmm. whenever this was, 20 years ago. And I remember, and I, my party is probably more to blame for this than, than the other side of the aisle, but certainly as much to blame, going after her as a stalker, as a, yeah. as, as a slut, as, you know, anything to do to take down this 22, 24-year-old girl who, yeah, made a mistake, but, I mean, you know, the, the, the rhetoric was so appalling to me, and I think that's what's so abhorrent to me. I think you made this point, Andrea, and it's a good one. You can't be defending women, and you can't be defending, and saying women are equal, and then treat women like they're sluts, or treat women, or, or call them horrible That's the first names. thing they say it's on Twitter. Horrible. They're like, rights, yeah. equal rights for women, we should treat women well, and then they're like, Andrea Tinteros, you're a whore, yeah. you're a, I'm just like, really? Okay, wow. So, yeah. very quickly, um, Rand Paul this afternoon said he's going to call on the Clinton Foundation to return the 10 to 15 million dollars that the Saudis donated to the Clinton Foundation because of all the... the you know, the, the issues they have, how they treat women in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. At the same time, Hillary Clinton's tweeting out all these gender issues. Like, that's going to be mm -hmm. a big portion of her platform. She's going to run into a lot of headwind with that. I agree. It's a political mistake for her to have taken that money. Good.